Thank you, Dr. Musa. So um, I'd like to kickstart the session with a talk on heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Uh, so I'm not gonna bore you with all these trials and review of the latest trials on heart failure. I'm just gonna give you a focus update on it. Um, honestly, there's, uh, over the last year, a lot has changed with heart failure. And we begin with the universal definition of heart failure. So it's been revised over the last year, and it, is, um, it basically goes like this. So heart failure is a clinical syndrome with symptoms and signs and or signs caused by a structural and or functional cardiac abnormality. And it has to be corroborated by a couple of things. So uh, it has to have, you have to, you have to have elevated natriuretic peptide or objective evidence of pulmonary or uh, systemic congestion. So uh, this is uh, nicely encapsulated by the um, left-hand column where the definition um, uh, is uh, 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 shown. In the middle column, you have the stages of heart failure and the right column is the new classification of um, uh, heart failure by EF. So the new classification has resolved some of the blurriness that we've had um, uh, previously when we classified um, patients. Uh, but uh, now it's nicely demarcated by the new guidelines. And what that helps us, it helps to align medical therapy by the classification, and it also helps us designing trials. So I'll just go through it quickly. Um, so you have four main categories. The first category is heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So that's when you have an LVEF of less than 40%. And then you have the one with mildly reduced ejection fraction or MREF. And that's with an LVEF of uh, between 41 and 49%. And then you have the heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, which is an EF of more than 50. The new category is the one on the, in the bottom which is heart failure with improved ejection fraction. And to qualify for that, you have to have had a baseline LVEF of less than 40% and a 10 point increase from baseline. And, the, and then you, you have to have had a, an EF of more than 40. So you have to have a baseline of less than 40, a 10 fold, uh, point increase, and an EF of more than 40%. Um, so it, the advice is for uh, medical therapy um, uh, has been codified by the expert consensus uh, decision pathway, uh, which articulates the primacy of ARNI uh, over ACE and ARBs. So in Tresto over ACE and ARBs, and even if you, you're already on an ACE and ARB, you have to, it's a class one indication to switch to an ARNI or an Entresto. So this has to be coupled with an evidence-based beta blocker, so that includes carvedilol, bisoprolol, and metoprolol succinate. Um, and um, it comes to the third uh, line of medications, which is this phenomenal um, class of medications called SGL2 inhibitors, I'll get the, to that. Um, uh, and then not, not to forget the um, aldosterone antagonists, and, and these patients, the patients that have um, a, a, a normal um, kidney function or a GFR that's more than 30 and not hypokalemic, then they are uh, uh, indicated to have aldosterone inhibitors. Um, and then there's some other things like ivabradine for patients who have not had, have not reached a target heart rate of less than 70 despite being on maximum beta blockers. Um, so I really wanted to, to uh, 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 highlight the four pillars of heart failure uh, uh, therapy or uh, uh, medical therapy and HEFREF. So the four pillars, as you can see, is uh, the, uh, the Entresto or ACE and R, beta blockers, the um, uh, aldosterone antagonist, and the SGL2 inhibitors. And it's very important, and, and we'll, we'll come to that, but it's very important that they are on at least three of these medications to get the maximum benefit and to reduce mortality. So. Um, when we talk about medical therapy, um, what the guidelines recommend is that you target the dose. You target the highest dose. You have to titrate the dose in order to get the maximum benefit. So it's very hard for you to probably see on the screen, but for example, a medication like metoprolol, you have to go, reach the target heart rate of 200. And with Entresto, you have to have had reached the, the 200 milligram uh, target. 
So what that does, it, it, there's a lot of challenges um, getting to those doses and it's not because we're not trying hard, it's because there's a lot of uh, cardiorenal uh, restrictions. Um, and um, so what we've done is that we've um, uh, um, uh, essentially uh, we, we came down to what is considered uh, goal-directed medical therapy, and there's individual parameters. So, for example, you have to have a heart, uh, you have to have a heart rate of less than 70, and that means you're doing adequate beta-1 blockade. And if you have a blood pressure that is less than 130 over 80, then you're really achieving good uh, medical therapy on these patients. And then we looked at uh, things like absence of congestion and some other objective parameters like a pro-BMP of less than 1,000. And we can also utilize invasive hemodynamics to look at filling pressures and um, uh, uh, a high cardiac index. Um, and then not to forget that, um, uh, you know, with these medications, you have to also make sure that you do not have a decrease in GFR that's more than 30% and hyperkalemia. So I wanted to digress a little bit and talk about um, SGL2 inhibitors. A lot of people have been asking, what is the principal mechanism behind its... Um, uh, 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 you know, uh, development and progr I mean, uh, in terms of uh, preventing um, heart failure. Um, so, you know, besides the fact that it works as a mild diuretic and, and, and uh, improved congestion, um, there's some, a lot of theorized or uh, proposed mechanism. To be honest, we don't know the exact mechanism, but I just want you want to highlight what is on the right side of the, of the slides or turn your attention to the right side of the uh, slides. And this is one of my favorite uh, theories, is that what it does essentially is it, um, uh, it, uh, it uh, uh, basically prevents uh, uh, the metabolism from glycolysis and transfers it to lipolysis. So it basically breaks down fat. And how does that come into play? It comes into play by the fact that Whenever you have epicardial fat, the epicardial fat has uh, inflammatory-mediated um, uh, signals and, um, and, and, and uh, pro-fibrotic um, uh, elements that uh, cause LV remodeling. And what happens when you uh, tr uh, shift from glycolysis to lipolysis, then you have less of those um, uh, cytokines and, and these uh, damaging um, elements, and that's how it slows down the cardiomyopathic uh, process and reduces heart failure events. So, <clears throat> uh, over the last decades, we know that uh, these uh, medical therapy or these different classes of medical therapy has improved survival and heart failure with ejection fraction. Uh, but is what is important to know is that um, each class uh, is independent. So you have about a 30 to 40% decrease in mortality independent of each class. And w whenever you add a medication, it has an additive benefit. And I also like to mention, there's also device-related therapies. So for example, cardiac resynchronization therapy also, in addition to medical therapy, can reduce uh, or improve survival. And it gets down to the new kid in the block. So the new kid in the block, and this is for me very exciting because I'm in interventional cardiology, is TIR. So TIR is um, a transcatheter edge-to-edge -edge, uh, repair of the mitral valve, and that has been shown and it's been recently integrated into the guidelines, uh, 2022 ACC guidelines, um, that is recommended for patients with severe, moderate to severe MR. So let's talk a little bit about TIR. So when, do you, when is this uh, indicated? So we can go by the algorithm, as you can see. So whenever you have a patient with secondary or functional MR, moderate to severe, he has to be referred to a heart failure specialist. So the heart failure specialist optimizes the medical therapy and monitors the patient. And then you have to have an echocardiographic assessment of the MR. If it's severe, then, um, and, and the patient has an EF of less than 50%, then uh, you look at his symptoms. If, uh, despite being on medical therapy, he has persistent uh, symptoms. Then you have an evaluation of the mitral valve anatomy. And if the anatomy is favorable, then you go for tear. If it's not favorable, then it's a surgical uh, replacement. So, uh, so, so uh, goal-directed medical therapy prior to tear drives outcomes. What does this mean? 
So we've seen from the data that um, you, know, you have to be on good medical therapy before you go for TIR. So for example, the Mitra, Mitra FR study showed, if you look at the blue line on top and the, and the one with COAP, which is in the bottom line, and the red one, uh, with COAP, the, the inclusion criteria included patients who were on goal-directed medical therapy, and those showed a difference in outcomes. So that's why it's important to put them on uh, medical therapy before uh, TIR. And what is also known is that, um, you know, regardless of whether they get TIR or they get gold directed medical therapy, what matters the most is the reduction in MR. So if you have reduction in MR, uh, you know, zero or, or one plus, you get the most benefit, benefit, whether it's with clipping or with uh, gold directed medical therapy. But what is shown and is highlighted here is that TIR reduces. Uh, MR by tenfold compared to medical therapy. So that's why it's very effective in these patients. And also, um, uh, uh, what's highlighted here is that LV remodeling continues after TIR. So what this means is that, you know, this is a cardiomyopathic process. Whenever you have heart failure, it's a cardiomyop uh, cardiomyopathy, and the myopathic process is still ongoing. And that's why it's very important to continue these medicines, disp even though you've... Um, uh, uh, clip the, 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 the uh, mitral valve and reduce the MR. So uh, again, it's, it's important that they remain on medical therapy. And this is um, a registry that was uh, presented in the European Heart Journal, and it showed that um, uh, uh, being on triple therapy compared to non-triple therapy, there was uh, improvement in outcomes by about 30%. And it's also, uh, 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 pertains to subgroups, important subgroups like patients with CKD, patients with ischemic cardiomyopathy, patients with um, uh, reduced uh, RV function, and, uh, uh, and those with residual MR. So, to summarize, um, uh, you should initiate and escalate the four foundational therapies for HFREF, uh, which is what I mentioned, the four pillars, the ARNI, the beta blocker, the SGL2 inhibitor, and the aldosterone um, um, inhibitors. And the, th the beauty about the SGL2, it works across all the uh, different um, range of uh, uh, heart failures. Um, and then success with TIR is predicated by the fact, uh, um, uh, the, uh, is predicated on MR reduction, uh, reduction and advancing goal-directed medical therapy. And for best results, initiate and escalate goal-directed medical therapy before and after TIR. And with that, thank you very much.